Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining Till he appeared and the soul felt its worth A thrill of hope the weary world rejoices For yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. All on your knees. Oh, hear the angel voice says, Oh, night divine, oh, night. When Christ was born, oh, night divine, oh, night, oh, night divine. Good evening, everybody, and Merry Christmas to all of you. I'm glad to see you here worshiping with us in person. And those of you joining us online, it is a great day to be worshiping uh, our Lord and Savior who has come in the form of a child to redeem and save us. Uh, before we begin our worship service, uh, for those of you who don't know, I am Pastor Jared. I started this year, so if you don't recognize my face, hopefully we'll get to interact and uh, you'll know me like a friend. In the back, we do have one announcement. Uh, if you have offering envelopes or haven't gotten them yet, our 2024 offering envelopes are on the back on a table. So as you're going out, if you're expecting to get those and you haven't yet, they are probably sitting back there with your name on them. Let's go ahead and rise and greet one another. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated.
On this most holy night, we remember that God fulfilled his promise to bring salvation to this fallen world. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. God kept his promise that first Christmas night. This will be a sign for you. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Tonight we celebrate our faithful God who keeps his promises to each of us. It is his faithfulness that gives us hope. As he appeared to the shepherds, so he comes to us tonight as we hear the true story of his birth. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill to men. Jesus entered this world because from the time of Adam and Eve, sin and its effects have brought the darkness of pain, heartache, and trouble. We come to this place tonight seeking the light of forgiveness and salvation that only the Savior Jesus can provide. We recognize we too are at fault. We confess our part in the sin and brokenness of this world. Have mercy on me, O God according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, completely wipe away my sins. The name Jesus means the Lord saves. Together we pray, Jesus, I need your love, grace, and forgiveness for all my sins. Thank you for coming to this earth to save me. Today in the city of David, a Savior is born for you, he is Christ the Lord. The announcement of the angels brings good, God's good news to our lives. Jesus has come. Jesus is here and brings his forgiveness, hope, and salvation for you. God's Son has come for you. Your sins are forgiven through faith in him. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Come, let us worship him.
Our epistle reading is from 1 John, the fourth chapter. This will also serve as a text for pastor's sermon this evening. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he has loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. If we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us, God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. This is the word of the Lord.
Our gospel reading is the, from the Gospel of St. Luke, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you, you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. This is the Christmas Gospel. Uh, for a message. Hello, friends. Hello, hello. I'm so glad you're all here. So today's just another day, right? Just kind of a normal day. No. We all decided to come here tonight and spend time together because we're all friends, right? No, it's Christmas Eve. Yeah. Isn't that exciting? That means tomorrow is Christmas. Do you guys like Christmas? Yeah. Why is that? Because I get lots of presents. Lots of presents, yeah. Because Jesus rose again, he did, and then something very special is happening tomorrow. Nice, you got Pokemon cards. All right, one more. It is. It's Jesus' birthday. You know what, guys? I love Christmas, and I always have. Can you guess how old I am? Yeah. A hundred? I am. I know that I'm starting to show it, but I'm a little younger than a hundred. Yeah. Thirty-nine. We're getting closer. So I am, well, now I'm blanking. I think I'm 27. I, my wife might be nodding in the back. I'm 26, maybe 27. So you know what, guys? I've had that many Christmases, and every Christmas, I love it. I was just as excited for you as you guys. I thought about the presents, waking up on Christmas Day. But you know what? Every year, I wanted a different present. Maybe it was Pokemon cards or a G.I. Joe or something. And every year, I wanted whatever that one thing was. And you know how many of those one things I still have with me at the house right now? 
Can you guess how many of those things I still have with me? <laughs> I do have Jesus. Guys, I, I don't have any of those toys with me anymore. You know, the truth is, uh, even though we like the toys now and they're great, uh, we get older and sometimes we stop playing with those toys and then they kind of disappear. But you know what? There is a gift coming this Christmas and actually every Christmas that is far more important than the Pokemon cards or any of those toys. Can you know what that, do you know what that toy is or what that thing is, that gift? Yes. Jesus. It's Jesus. We are getting Jesus. He is our present. And I'm going to fill you in on a little secret of what makes this gift so special. So you know all those toys that you get? Do, do they sometimes break? Sometimes, right? They sometimes break? Well, sometimes we do stuff we shouldn't do and, and we kind of get some cracks maybe or, or we, start to, we start to sin is what we say. Jesus, this little baby who came, our present, makes us whole. He fixes us. So even though some of those toys might be broken beyond repair and we're going to forget about them, Jesus stays with us every single day and he fixes us and he loves us. And you know what? I'm 27 or 26 or something, maybe 100. And Jesus is still here. He's not going anywhere. He's in my life and he is in your lives. He came because he loves us so, so much. Can you guys pray with me? Dear Lord, thank you for sending your son into this world. Help us to look forward to that gift of your son Jesus and knowing that he will always be with us. In your name we pray, amen. All right, friends, there is candy on each side here. You can get it on the church or out of the little red bowl and then head on back to your seats. Reconciled, joyful all ye nations rise, join the triumph of the skies with the angelic host proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Let me start by saying Merry Christmas or, or Merry Christmas Eve, whichever the case may be. Uh, nonetheless, it's a joyous day. Personally, I can't believe it's actually here. I feel like December just started and now we're facing down Christmas, but it is. It's here. One more uh, tireless night and we are celebrating Christmas. I don't know about all of you, but I love Christmas. I love uh, the Christmas movies. And I love the Christmas music. And I love looking at the Christmas trees and all the lights. And, and yes, I even love spending all that time with family and friends. Are you starting to pick up what my sermon might be about? What is love? Christmas is supposed to be this time when we, when we spend time with loved ones. We concentrate on loving each other. But what does that word even mean? I bet if I were to ask all of you and take a survey, I'd get all sorts of answers, right? I mean, somebody might say, well, love is, is the butterflies that you get when you meet that right someone. Or love is, is the ability or the willingness to just go all the way and do everything, stop at nothing to be there with somebody. Or love is the, the concentration, the desire, the need to have something in your life, the, the uh, dependence or the obsession in a good way. Maybe that's what love is. I think the reason that love is so confusing is because it's, it's not something we can get our hands on. It's actually, it's what we call an abstract concept. So love falls in line with something like freedom or, or beauty uh, and, and justice. You see, we can't put it in a box, so to speak. We can't reach out and pick love up and look at it. Instead, we have experiences. We have inklings. You might experience something that you say, yeah, this, this feels like it's love. But in our lives, that's about as close as we get. So for this Christmas, I got a present for you all. Well, actually, I got two presents for you all. I decided this Christmas I was going to box up love and I was going to give it to you all. And as I was trying to do this, do my best, I realized, you know, love is just such a big thing. I couldn't fit it into one box. So I decided I'd break it up into two presents for you, and it made it a lot easier. So this Christmas, spoiler alert, I'm sorry to tell you what's already in your presents this year, but I'm going to give you the love of the world and the love of God. And we're going to open it up, we're going to see what's inside. And at the end of the night, I have to tell you, you, you only get to take one of those home. One of these presents that I have boxed up. So I'm going to share a Fenske tradition, let's all get on our warm, comfy clothes, our pajamas, gather around the Christmas tree, and see what's underneath. The first thing we need to do if we want to unwrap the presents is figure out who they're from, figure out who they're going to. So the first present here that I have for you, it says that uh, it's two family and friends, but that's weird, it says it's conditional. I don't know how that works, and it's from you and I, so really we should understand what that means, but what does it mean? Is this present even for us? Do we get to unwrap it this Christmas season? Do we fit in that category? I think unfortunately when love comes from us, whatever it is that is in this box that we're going to open up, when it comes from just us, questions like this can start to arise. Because the truth is we are conditional and imperfect people. The unfortunate truth is that Christmas is a great time to see this conditional kind of love. Consider all the people in your broad social circle this year. Did everybody in your social circle warrant the same kind of love? The same amount of love from you? I bet you have somebody in your life that you love deeply, and, and this Christmas you spent quality time with them. And you thought painstakingly, you wanted to make sure they had the best present this year. And then maybe you have somebody else in your life that uh, they, don't, they don't quite warrant that same special treatment, so uh, maybe you sent them a Christmas card and it said, you know, Merry Christmas, good to see you. you. You kind of checked that mark. And maybe there's other people you haven't even talked to in the last year. And they just got the Merry Christmas on social media somewhere and that was the end of it. And you see the problem is our conditional love, it doesn't even stop there. Not only do we condition or tear the way that we love people, 
We even tear the people that we love. For instance, did any of you here take the time to, to spend an enormous amount of quality time and pick that perfect Christmas present for somebody that deeply hurt you this year? Did you search really hard to make sure that they had the best Christmas ever? Somebody that really wronged you. You see, Christmas is supposed to be a time of unconditional love where we love people, but the fact of the matter is we get stressed and we get worried. I mean, you look out at Christmas shopping and people are just so focused, and instead of putting love under the Christmas tree, it turns out that our hatred ends up on people's doorsteps. Our love is imperfect. It is conditional. And truthfully, where does it even come from? I mean, is our heart something that's in, or is our love something that's in our heart? Does it come from here? Is it something you feel? Or is love something that's just in your mind? Something you comprehend, something you logically understand? These are the people in my life I have to love. I think we struggle to understand what love really is because it's not intrinsically in there. It's not a part of us. We struggle, we reach out, we try and figure it out for ourselves, but it's just not in there. And I mean real love, true, real love is not in there. And that brings us to our second present this Christmas that I bring to you. This one says it's from God. It says it's from love. And it says it's to everybody. How is that even possible? How is it possible that the gift is for everybody, but how is it possible that this gift that I've already told you, love's inside, is from love? In our epistle reading for today, we hear from John that God is love, period. God is love. Those who can really love in this world, they know who God is because God is love. Dear friends, this gift this gift came from the source of love because he embodies, exists in, is completely, wholeheartedly love. That's incredible. Whatever is in this box, it's whole, it's complete, it's not tainted by sin or anything else, it's not conditional. It's perfect love because it came from love, the person who is love, period. And not only that, but it's marked to go to everybody. Everybody deserves this present. Notice it doesn't have any quotations, Mark, any extra stipulation. It goes to everyone. Whatever is in here is meant for the entire world. And not only that, but, but his love. Whatever is in this gift that goes to the whole world, it goes to everybody whether they deserve it or not. And another spoiler None of us deserve whatever is going to come in this box. Have you had a year just riddled with sin? Great, here's the present. Have you had a great year full of joy? Great, here's the present. Has your year been so hard and full of challenges and you're wondering, does God even still love me? I promise you it does because here, here is the present. It's difficult for us to wrap our minds around this. But God is love. You can't separate those two ideas, those two things. And that's what John is trying to say in his reading when he says God is love. God can't be pulled away from love because he is unchanging. He has been the same God way back when he is today and will always be. Love can't be separated from God because without him we have no idea what love really looks like, what it is. All right, enough. Enough about the labels. I'm sure you're all itching to open up your presents, aren't you? So let's get in it. Let's open up our presents. We're going to start with that one that came from us, the one from the world. What's love look like? As I was writing this message, I was trying to think of all the stuff we give to one another, how we show our love. And I wanted to give you a long list, but then I realized, you know what? I don't think I need a long list. I bet you all have ideas in your own minds how we show love. Put it in the box. Maybe it's the sports car that you've always wanted. Maybe it's those season tickets to whatever the case may be that you can spend with somebody. Maybe it's a toy. I don't know. Whatever it is for you. Just like I said in my kids' message, 
whatever is in that box, it's going to be imperfect. Those sports cars are going to put the miles on and break down. Those season tickets are going to come and go. Whatever it is that we show, whatever it is that we use to convey our love, it's not complete. It's not whole. We strive, we try, we, we do, I promise, to give love. But in the long run, we miss pieces of it. We can't quite comprehend what it really looks like to embody true, whole, full love as God is love. Has anyone here heard of the five love languages? Yeah, maybe somebody. Perfect. If you haven't, they're physical touch, acts of service, words of affirmation, quality time, and gifts. As I was thinking about how we strive to figure out what love is, try and put it in a box, I thought, yeah, that's that's a pretty good list. It covers a lot of bases. And I think even the best gifts, they miss some of those. Or maybe you hit it just once, you get all of them into one perfect day for somebody. But chances are, after the day's done, we keep missing things. Our love continues to be conditional. It continues to be imperfect. It continues to not truly envelop what God's love is. So let's open up our next box, the one from God. It's not, it's not empty, I promise. There's something in there. But you see, God's love is so big, I couldn't contain it in this little box. So as soon as I took the lid off, it just all exploded out. Dear friends, I really hope you know what's in this box, especially considering what today is. In that box is Jesus, God's one and only Son, His son that he sent into this world because he loved you and I so much. He didn't come as a king or a ruler. He came as a tender child, as a baby, to redeem us, to walk alongside in creation. He took on flesh with all the aches and the pains and everything else that comes alongside of that. In birth, we receive the physical touch of our loving God. And today, not only do we celebrate the birth of Christ, but if we really wrap our minds around what we are celebrating today, we look forward to and celebrate the life of Christ. You see, not only did this baby come into the world to redeem and save us, he grew up and he taught and he loved and he healed. You want to talk about acts of service? Jesus' entire life was an act of service to mankind. And don't worry, this isn't the only thing that's in that box from God. You see, not only do we get the manger and the baby Jesus, but we get something more. John says in his reading, in this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. You see, Jesus was the gift. Jesus came into this world to be born, to live for you and me. He was born, he lived, he sacrificed, he humbled himself to the point of death. That was the gift. He was the gift for us. This Christmas, don't stop at seeing just baby Jesus in the manger. You have to look at the whole picture and see baby Jesus in the manger and Jesus on the cross who would live, die, and rise again so that we could have eternal life. What is love? This, this is love, a life redeemed undeserved, eternal love and salvation. And the gift doesn't even end there because God gives us his word. He gives us his word to tell us about everything that he has done. He gives us his word so that he can tell us the whole story, the story of everything, the story from the beginning of how he would stop at nothing to bring the world back to himself, just how far he was willing to go. Words of affirmation, what a greater story to be told than the one that shows us we are saved and loved each and every day. That story, it includes you and me. Think about that too. Not only was Jesus born, not only did he live, die, and rise again, but that story, it kept going, and now you're sitting here in this church, that's all one story, and one day Jesus is going to come back. That's all one story. That's the gift that's in this box. That is what our God has done because he loved, because he is 
love. And lastly, there's something else in that box that you can't see. Maybe that first picture was fitting. Something you can't see, but it's equally important. God gives us his Holy Spirit. He gives us his Holy Spirit so that he, or that we can believe everything he said he is going to do. He gave us the Holy Spirit because he didn't just want to redeem the world and let it be. He redeems it, and he doesn't stop redeeming and loving it. In the Holy Spirit, God remains with us. Talk about quality time. The loving Father wants to spend time with you and me. How great. How great is his love. He encourages. He sustains. He protects. He invites us to reside within the light and life of the world. I pray that you see exactly what has happened here, exactly what is in this gift. If your definition of love is the five love languages, that's great. But God hits every one of those perfectly. And let me tell you this, he goes beyond the love language. He goes beyond our understanding of love because he is love. We're never going to be able to put it in a box. We're never going to be able to comprehend what exactly God has done for us. And that's okay. It's okay because it means that we get to wake up and every time we draw a new breath, we get to comprehend, feel, understand new love, new hope, new opportunities to reside in unity with God in everything that we do for all eternity. That's love. I hope that you all have a, a blessed Christmas, a blessed Christmas Eve. But whatever it is that your night brings and then your morning, I want to invite you to remember that the best present is Christ. He has come for you and me. We waited for his birth, and now we've received our gift. We've received the Christ child. So remember this Christmas to not only rejoice that he has come, but rejoice that the child has done everything for you and me. And rejoice that the gift received this night, that undeserved gift in the manger, is more than we will ever, ever need or deserve. It is more than we can ever comprehend. The gift of God has been sent. It has been received. And it has been opened. All that's left to do is invite it into our lives or be invited into his lives more appropriately. Live in that hope and that grace and the love that can only come from God. Amen.
time we bring our offerings forward. And again, thank you for your continued support of our Lord's work here at Peace. The offering plates were at the door as you came in and will be there when you exit. And also there are ways to give online as noted. Dearest Jesus, we give thanks that you came in love to that manger in Bethlehem so that you might ultimately give your life for the sins of the world and that you might bring us the great gift of forgiveness and love and the gift of salvation through faith in you. May these offerings, gifts, tithes, and special gifts be used to further that message of love through the ministry of this church and school and child care as well as our mission work throughout this world. In Jesus' name, amen. Some of you are aware that there have been a few tragic car accidents last night and one also today south of town. We want to include in our prayers those families tonight. Dearest Jesus, hear our humble prayer on this Christmas Eve as we gather in festive spirit to celebrate the wonders of your holy birth. We confess that all the words that we speak and sing to your glory this night fall far short of the praise we sinners owe you, our God, who left your throne in heaven to appear here in lowliness as our Savior. A stable was your first home, a manger your first bed. Yet for our sakes you endured far deeper humiliation than this, for you came to bear the cross, the shame, the suffering, and even the death which we deserve. We thank you for coming here and sharing our human nature, for you did this that we might share your glory in immortality forever in heaven. We thank you for your marvelous love which made you willing to sacrifice yourself on the cross. We thank you for the joy of being saved and for the privilege of living our lives for you. Be with those in need this night, those who have lost loved ones, including the families of those in those car accidents recently. Be with those who are hospitalized, those who are suffering from cancer and other diseases, those who are alone this Christmas night. May they know your presence in their life daily and be lifted by your salvation. Bless our children that they may remain faithful to you throughout their lives ever adoring you as their Lord and King, and ever trusting you as their Savior, and ever serving you as their Master. Keep us all in the faith, and direct our footsteps from day to day with the light of your love and the truth that shines tonight so brightly in our hearts. In your mercy, beam the gospel of salvation to every nation and people. Convert the hearts of sinners everywhere, that they may rejoice with us at your birth and find comfort in the sacrifice you made on the cross. Take us all at last to heaven, where together with the angels and all who have gone before us in the faith, we'll sing your praises in perfect love through endless ages. Amen. Please stand with me as together we pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
When they had seen Jesus, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. Go with his blessing and share what you have heard about this child, Jesus, the Son of God, Savior of the world. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace.